Okay, so there's something we need to talk about with extract that we haven't yet mentioned. And it's really important because if you do this part wrong, you're not going to be able to import or extract the data from your CSV files. So just imagine that this is your CSV file. Take a look at the start timestamp in Excel specifically. Look at what it says. The time is 1 colon 46. Right? If I click on this though, that's not what the original data says. The format has been changed slightly and it includes an AM PM and that will throw data stage for a loop. You must provide a lot of detail about date and timestamps in order to get the imports to work. So a good way to handle this is go to your folder, open up your CSV file and do it in Notepad++ because here you're going to see the raw data and the way that it's going to be imported when you do your uh, CSV extracting. Okay, so what do I mean by that? Well, go into the designer, go to file new, create a new parallel job, and let's put a, go to f the file group, go to your sequential file stage, drag that to the canvas. Okay, now rename it. I'm just going to call it CSV, and let's drag a link out, and let's put another sequential file here on the other end. Let's also rename it to, say, out. And then I'll rename the link, we'll call it out as well. Okay, and now I need to locate my CSV file, so I'll click on File, and I'll go to Browse, I'll locate it. This one is called Dates. And then like we've seen before, the first line does contain the column name, so set that to true. And now I'll click on Format, and in fact, Format and Columns are the two tabs we're going to focus on most here. So the first thing we're going to do is bring in our table definitions and then secondly we're going to look at the format tab to be sure we're bringing in bringing them in correctly so we let's click on OK and we're going to go back to our table definitions we're going to, nothing fancy here import table definitions same as before SQL file table definitions be sure we have the right folder and it didn't it says we don't have any files that are txt we don't because they're CSV this file is called dates .csv, that's import, and we do have first line is column names, it's a comma separated file, and here is where we have to spend a little bit of time. It's really important to be sure that these SQL types are accurate, so go to this drop down, here it says we have a date, but if you look at our file back here, we have more than just a date, we have a time portion of it, so this date is not appropriate, we need to switch to a timestamp, and then for the length, we essentially need to determine how many characters roughly we have. So let's count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. But we could, in fact, have 22, right, if this were two digits. So let's make that 22. And then we'll be consistent because we have more than one field doing that, that are timestamps in this file. So, in fact, this is the same. And... If you look at that file, you'll see that the timestamps are the same. We have four total fields, so I'm going to make them all the same. Now, if your file, for some reason, had different lengths of or different formatted columns for times, then you are going to need to, we're going to look at this in a second, you're going to need to go back to the format tab and change the format associated with whichever type you have. So if they're all timestamps, well, you really only have one option here, it's timestamp, and you're not going to be able to do much other than try to handle them separately in the transformer stage. And once we get into the formats section, the, what we do in there will be really similar, um, uh, similar formatting that you would do in the transformer stage. In any case, uh, if you had a date as opposed to a date time, then you could have a date, you could select date here. But in this case, again, they're all dates and times, and therefore they're timestamps. And we basically are just trying to choose a length that is uh, as long as, uh, we're trying to accommodate as long as it could reasonably get. Okay, that looks fine. And if you, you want to be sure that all the others make sense too, they're all var cars, and you know, if you wanted to, you could select uh, Unicode or during the import we can say we want to make sure they're all Unicode fine for what our purposes this is this is good we don't have anything unusual so let's click on OK and watch the importer go through its steps click close and then now 
we can go back in here, go to columns, go to load, and open up our dates.csv file. Here's what I was talking about earlier about ensure all character columns use Unicode, so we can click on OK. So now they're all Unicode extended listed, extended as listed here. And now that was the columns tab. The question that we have now is what is the format tab doing with those columns? And what do I mean by that? Well, here it says timestamp. Well, what is timestamp supposed to look like here? This is where you would format it. So this is the default formatting, and that's clearly not what we have here. So if I tried to uh, try to get an idea of what this would be, say that I um, say it's percent %h, and then I say, well, then it's uh, there's a colon, and then there's a percent %n, and then there's a percent %s, that looks right, and then there's an AM, PM, but I'm not really sure what I'm supposed to do with that. Maybe I'm going to do a space there, and then I'm going to do a percent %aa. And how on earth do I know those values? Because if you go to this book here, you will see them all listed, the Parallel Job Developer's Guide, and you can see all of these values. Here are the times that we need, and we have the dates uh, listed as well, so we have dates uh, listed here. So that's where you would find those values. Okay, now if I try to load this, what do you think we will get? That is the question. And we get an error, so it didn't like what we typed in. And this is actually fairly common, and unfortunately uh, it takes some time to just sort of go through this, try to figure out what went wrong, and fix it. And of course, we don't, we're not really starting out the way we said, right? We're really starting out with a month, and then we have a slash, and then we have the day, and then we have a slash, and I'll present y, 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 y. And that is a lot closer to what we're actually looking at. Plus, there's a typo. So the, all of those things will cause data stages to throw errors and give trouble, and you just need to sort of kind of <laughs> go through it until you get, the, until you get what you're after. Okay, so the first step in solving this problem is to just notice this data is obviously a little strange, and you might run into something odd like this. There's two spaces in here, that's strange, it's in an AM format, and okay, you'll find that. But uh, this is a good example of things that can go strange and weird and how to compensate for them. So, first of all, notice this chart. We had seen this before, but we didn't really look at this thing called options. And we're going to need it because there's a, something called a percent %AA, which has an option of U, where U represents, and we can see this down on the next page, we can see U representing AM and PM in the uppercase. So that's important. The other thing that's important is this thing called an S. So if you want to use these special options, what you do is you keep your percent sign and then you enclose the rest inside these um, inside these brackets or these parentheses. And then you can add whatever uh, option is listed above, above after the comma. So whatever tag, so the tag that they're talking about is this tag, and then your option follows that. So what does that mean in practice? It means that, let me zoom in so you can see this better, it means that we need to change this. Although percent %m is fine and percent %d is fine and, and the percent %yyy is all fine, here you need to have two spaces, and we do, and then you need to have a percent, the same syntax we just looked at, we're going to do a capital H, because a capital H, remember, it represents hour, 12 hours, so not 24 hours, because those numbers are not 24 hours. They're only 12, so we need to have an H in there. And then separately, we need to put a colon, and then that needs to be followed by a percent sign, and then an N, so this is for the minutes, the N of minutes, and then a colon, and then a percent sign, and then S for seconds, and then here's where it gets a little bit interesting. And by the way, these S's that you're seeing here, as you saw on the other screen, that means that this value over here could be a zero, so this could be a zero here, or it could be a space, either one. But that's important because you may have some data that can do that. Ours doesn't, thankfully. But anyway, after that, you have a space, just like you see in the actual data. And then you have your, what's called the meridian, or the AA. And that is your AM, PM, but you need to indicate whether or not it is in capital or not. And, and sure enough, in our case, it is in capital, so we need to mention the fact that it's in capitals. So if you do all of that, 
and then you click on view data and then you click on OK. Then we finally get to the answer that we wanted and we have these dates that were originally strings interpreted correctly by data stage so that we can continue on. Now one last thing that we need to talk about and this is actually quite a bit um, uh, this is quite a bit easier in a way but something you need to be aware of. Um, we had originally clicked on load but what you noticed was when we did this was that this value here, for, um, I've got it in DOS format, I'm, I'm about to explain why, but um, and before we change this, once again, let's go back down to the format string, let's not lose this. And if you had any dates, by the way, you could do a simple date string like that, that's fine. But we don't want to lose this, so we're going to click on load, and then we're going to pull in our dates. Now, if you do this, which can be useful, um, but can also be problematic, you are obviously going to need to copy this back in under the time under the timestamp, which we had done uh, before. So there we go. But separately, look at this. We have something called the Unix, or the record delimiter, which is Unix. And we had earlier said, well, that's fine. It says it's not really Unix. We know that it's a CRLF. Well, this it, record delimiter is a single character, and we know from before that a single character in Linux doing that is going to be our good old slash or backslash n, which is lf, which is a single character. And so this is not appropriate for our file, right? What we need to do is get rid of this. A record delimiter is a single character. We need multiple characters, crlf, so click record delimiter string, and that will allow you to choose the DOS format, the so-called crlf format, where we are looking at the Windows format. And now, you, data stage will correctly interpret this file as having come from a Windows platform, which it did. And so long as we're on the topic, be sure that your file always has a CRLF to delimit the end of that record, the end of the line. Now I have under view WordRap turned on, but if I didn't, it would be a single line, of course. I just want you to be able to see the CRLF. So this is important because this record, every record, is delimited by CRLF according to the DOS format here. And if we had Unix, then obviously each one would be delineated by LF. If you do not include this, if I take that out, then as far as data stage is concerned, that record has not completed. It's not done. It has not been delimited. So make sure your files end properly like this crlf or just an lf and then the next line is a blank line because that blank line will indicate the end of the file as it says here it's really important if you want to be sure that your files are not giving you strange behavior when you're trying to uh, go into view data and you're, you're not able to see information that you know is in that file